If there was a Hall of Fame for unsung heroes, Peter would be inducted into it because Peter is, has been a hero to me and he was a hero to everyone who knew him. And everybody that we've interviewed for this video has called Peter a hero. I wanted to make this video to say thank you to Peter for all that he's done for me over many, many years, um, 35, 36 years of friendship. And we've been there for each other like brothers. And I really do regard Peter as my brother. And even though I'm a little bit older than Peter, I think of him as my big brother because I look up to him. And I'm the one that was learning from him. Our only obligation is that we have a trail that's wide enough to accommodate your front wheel and rear wheel. In other words, a single track. There's not room enough for a pickup or a four-wheeler or anything like that because you're probably on an off-camber, very steep slope, and you have to literally uh, dig the course out to give them a loop to ride on. But sometimes it would be so steep that you would have rock on the upside, huge rock. Where does it lead? Well, <laughs> we, we hope that it leads, <laughs> usually it leads, uh, I would say that Peter was the main person you could count on being there. He never ran out of words, never ran out of words that I even know of. Well, thanks for coming today to pay tribute to the legendary Peter Zapata, who sadly passed away two weeks ago. Peter battled cancer valiantly for 20 years and defeated it against all odds, but the cumulative side effects from the wide-ranging treatments that cured his cancer finally took him away from us too soon. Some of you may not know that Peter co-founded the Arizona Trail Riders in the mid-80s, with several others in attendance today, including Howard Utzi, Bill Nickel, and John Miller. As president of the club for well over a decade, Peter was the driving force behind the AMA Desert Mountain National Enduro, the legacy of which endures today through the hundreds of miles of legal single track that were built by the blood, sweat, and tears of volunteers like you and me back in the day in order to provide the nation's best enduro riders the most challenging enduro course over the most rugged terrain on the National Enduro Circuit. Many of those miles of trails served as the foundation of the mile marker and wildcat trail systems that are among the most popular trails in Arizona today. It wasn't an easy task to get the permits required by the Forest Service, the BLM and the State Land Commission to hold those Enduros back in the 80s. But Peter succeeded where others failed in working amicably with the various government agencies involved. And he demonstrated to those trying to stand in his way that Peter Zapata and the Arizona Trail Riders were a force to be reckoned with. Sweep Rider is there to clean up the mess or to make the, the difficulties that they incurred. In other words, they got a flat tire, they fell too hard, word needs to get back for emergency, that sort of thing. That's what they do. He's the last, they're the court of last result for those people. That's the only way they're going to get out of there, if they have somebody that has ability to pick them up. In other words, his personality was a caring person. And probably by the time he was doing that, he, he, might, have, uh, he might have been sick at that time, the beginning of it, and knew he couldn't race you know, so he was just doing his part. Yeah, he was good with people, and he was a, he was a good public speaker, uh, uh, unlike me, but uh, that's the way it goes. <laughs> just a great guy, a guy you could depend on, a guy you could, when you went on a long ride, 
in real remote areas with Pete, you always knew he would be there. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He wouldn't lose you, and you wouldn't lose him. He'd be, you know, so you, just a guy you could really depend on. The time he got his bike stuck in a uh, inlet uh, near uh, old, the old mill, he 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 almost got stuck himself trying to get out of there. You know, he had parked the bike, and then. Uh, so he had to abandon it finally, and so we went back there looking for it, and the water was, there was no way you could see it. It was completely underwater when we got back down there. So the next day after the water had went down, we went down, it was still standing out there in the mud, and we managed to get it out. He really accomplished anything he set his mind to, so I really think it was the power of his mind, among other things, that he said, I'm going to make it for this, and then I'm going to make it for that. And in the meantime, we're going to live life as best that we can. And I think that's exactly how he got as far as he did and, and to know his grandchildren. I was his boy. So I was right there handing him tools and helping him with his dirt bikes and putting stuff together or any type of projects. You know, I was getting greasy and, you know, doing stuff right alongside him. I was his little shadow. And so I think with the way he was so resilient and coped with so much adversity as if it didn't phase him, helped demonstrate to other people that things can be done and life doesn't need to be shattered even when you're given grim information. My sister and I knew we had a cool dad, but that's the amazing part and the hardest part because he did touch so many people's lives and he was amazing. He, sh he showed his compassion, his amazingness really to everybody. Well, I think one of Peter's strengths from my perspective is the impact he had on youth. And I think that the youth are our future. I'm sure Peter left an impression on all of the students' lives that he touched, and that will live on forever. They'll always remember Peter. You know how you always have that one teacher that you remember that encouraged you? Peter is that guy. It was never about Peter. It was, it was always about how he wanted to help people. And so his legacy really is people going above and beyond to be like Peter, to be the way that Peter was to them. And it's something that you can give back for. He was a guy that lived by example. It wasn't a, this is what you do, it's watch me. This is what you do. It was never about Peter. It was, it was always about how he wanted to help people. He was selfless in everything that he did for us. And it taught me to be a better person and to be more selfless and more giving. And he did that so many times. He was such a selfless, giving person. I would say that he was the most selfless and giving person that I knew. And he always had the most positive attitude about it. I'm not saying that it wasn't hard on him or he didn't have struggles with it, but he always was positive about it. I'm gonna beat it. It is what it is. If I meant to go, I meant to go, but I'm gonna try and fight it. You know, it sucks, I'm gonna fight it. I'm not gonna let it get the best of me. And he never, I don't feel like he ever let it get the best of him. I think I have more patience now than I did, probably because I'm retired, but also <laughs> because I think that I had a really good example of someone uh, in Peter and in Mary who are patient, kind people. Patience and kindness first. Everything else can follow. First of all, his intelligence was always uh, underlying everything. I mean, he really was a figure and solve, a figure out and solver of problems. He could solve problems. He came up with creative ways to solve problems. So that was always there and that helped everyone. Kindness and patience were, are things that I believe are some of the most important attributes any human being can have. And now that I'm in my 60s and I'm older, I see that more clearly now than I ever did when I was young. And Peter 
embodied that, those things, because the people that he was around, whether it was high stress situation, whether he was getting the full respect and cooperation he should have had at that moment, his, his number one was kindness and patience. And that had, that has so much effect. I, I mean, that's like one of those where you drop a stone in the water and the waves just go out. The, the effects of those attributes, when you exemplify those and you show those to other people, that's a real ripple effect. Peter was always the guy that could pick out the underdog in the crowd and um, find out what the problem was and then help them to come up with solutions to overcome those problems and to be their best self. So he was just always patient, listening, kind, um, just a great guy. So there was me, Peter, and a youth guy, and we, we tried to get the, the gate to push back, but it didn't push back. <laughs> so one guy's pulling this way, Peter's pulling this way, and I pushed the gate. Peter had his fingers stuck in, in wedged in the in the fence so he's like ooh, ooh. so I pull the gate back I get the other guy's hand kinked so he starts screaming I push back I get Peter's again and I push back and I get the other guys and we all kind of step back and... it was classic it was it was the three stooges it was the three stooges it was it was classic and so every time I think of Peter I, I think of that. So this is where you grew up. This is it. The uh, the kitchen where my mom was a terrific, terrific chef. I mean, she could make about anything. And when she, I, rem I always remember when. When the team came out from Washington to first interview her and considering her as a possible nominee for the Supreme Court, she made a salmon souffle for these uh, U.S. attorneys. And I think that in and by themselves won them over instantly. So this is the hall. It's a very linear building. The, the boys' bedroom was, well, we had a bathroom right here originally, and then the boys' bedroom, three boys, a bunk bed and a single bed off in this area and then in the end here uh, we had the bathroom that was servicing the master bedroom when Scott my older brother went out to college I moved in here and this is where Pete Zapata and I shared this room we had a single bed here and a single bed here matching and uh, and this is where Pete lived for nine to ten months uh, out of his life with me and when, when we when we would turn up the music we had an open area here and we we get all excited to hit the town on a Friday night and we'd be dancing and playing the Bee Gees and it was always just fun to crank up the music with Pete and, and just uh, and, and George Gallery would be here and uh, uh, Carl Teresi and and uh, we might have a beer or two in here and uh, uh, those were great times. So, Pete, you were a great roommate. My folks would have uh, uh, parties where they'd have the entire Senate, Arizona Senate come out there and we'd have margaritas parties and that sort of thing. But when we'd have a prom night, my group of friends, including Peter and George Gallery and Carl Teresi, we would be out around the pool and my mom would, would even allow us to have some beer and that kind of thing and, and, and dinner. Uh, but it was actually later on that uh, the romance between Claire and Peter started around that pool of the O'Connor house is where it all started for Peter and Claire Zapata. He was multi-layered. I mean, he just had so many facets to his life. He was an athlete, motorcycle riding, and he, very intelligent. I mean, he was a teacher, you know, he was a giver. And he was just, he gave back to humanity. So, I mean, what, what's there not? And he brought smiles to people's faces. He never really complained about it. You know, he just, this was part of his life. Um, 
for most people would probably be really debilitating. But he just kept it even, he just positive attitude and just kept going. And I mean, it was one after the other. You know, it was just, it was just like, how is this guy even getting up in the morning? But he got up and he just continued on and it was quite enabling and very, uh, you know, just inspiring, actually. And he just kept his motorcycling. He kept telling him jokes, kept his smile, Jesus. And that alone would cure anything, just about, so. Always upbeat, even in the worst of times. And, and I do not remember ever having a quarrel with Peter. And so, you know, we were as close as brothers when we were living together. And uh, you would think over the course of the, the almost year that we lived in tight quarters, we might have gotten in some kind of argument. Not, not one. And so um, just, again, inspiring that he was always an upbeat fellow. And those are the kind of people we all naturally gravitate to. So I thank Peter for always lifting me um, when I might have needed it. So that's what I love and appreciate and will always remember about Pete Cepeda. I wish he was out here. You know, that was a, a guy that no matter who I talked to would say, damn, he's a good guy. Absolutely. And then I started thinking about the trips he and I went on, and no matter who you talk to, they'll tell you they were his best friend because that's the way he made you feel. So um, I'm actually his best friend. He was cheating on me. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, that's uh, way, a, a good guy gone way too soon. We're gonna miss him dearly. Every picture I see, it kills me. That's all I got. I remember him from a, a little kid over at the ATR meetings and um, everybody looked up to Pete. So um, that was just some of my best memories with him and, and the stories and him uh, I, I always wanted that CR500 that he had, right up till he drowned it in the ocean. But uh, just a just a great guy and, and a great family. That's the that's that's just what I really really loved about him. So, yep, all too soon and um, rest in peace, Pete. Really kind of struck me as a guy to say that I could get along with. And anyways, over the years, I wanted to. I was very uh, interested in ATR and wanted to become a better writer and better member. And so I followed Pete around. Uh, I say that jokingly, but I watched everything he did. He organized all these races. He got all these permits. Um, handled a lot, of, juggled a lot of tasks, and it was just impressive to watch. Uh, as a guy at work, and I admired him. And uh, whether he knew it or not, he was, he was my mentor when it comes to ATR, uh, and probably my life. So when uh, the time came, I, uh, when Pete couldn't do the work anymore, and the cancer got him, and had to step, step away, I kind of took over as race director, and uh, a lot of everything Pete did taught me um, came into play, and I was always hoping to give him back the, the title. I would have been happy to, but that wasn't to be, so. I've spent uh, the last 30 years just trying to do everything he taught me and make good races, make good decisions, and so far so good. So, Pete, if I can do this, me, me amigo, uh, take care, it's been an honor. Hello, Gary Spadafore here. So I'm a um, original member of Arizona Trail Riders uh, back in the, uh, I believe, 87 or so. and. Uh, yeah, one, one big memory I have is uh, I got married in October of 1989 and everyone asked where I was going for a honeymoon and I said I'm going to Baja with the Arizona Trail Riders and Pete, Peter was on that, that trip and I just remember always a smile, um, very good looking guy by the way, um, but always a smile, always a friendly, uh, friendly word uh, and just a, a doggone good guy. So. Um, Miss you, and uh, we'll see you sometime. Bye-bye. Well, being Peter's little sister, 
There is not enough time, space, or words to capture how much I loved my big brother, Peter. You see, being his little sister, I had one of the best seats in the house because I got to live my whole life with Peter. And so I just have these few words. Peter, I love you forever and you will always forever be in my heart. I think one of the things I will miss the most is how you and I always found laughter. I don't care if we were going to a cancer treatment or it was a lazy Sunday afternoon. Somehow, somewhere, you and I always found laughter. Not sure where we got it, maybe our crazy dad, but for this, I have so much great gratitude. So Peter, it's not goodbye. I'll see you sometime. I love you forever. To be honest, I don't think that there was anything left unsaid because the nature of a 20 year battle with multiple recurrences of cancer is you talk about potential loss a lot and we were very open and honest and clear with each other and so there was never, I don't have that feeling of like what I didn't say, but I, what I would tell him and what I've told him is, you know, we're going to be okay and we'll continue his legacy in so many ways. Even though I set out to help myself heal, I hope this video helps others heal as well, especially his family, his dear wife, Claire, and his daughters, Katie and Abby, and all of the people that love Peter in any capacity at all. And, and beyond the healing that we all need, I hope that others find this video inspirational because Peter was an inspiration. He made this world a better place. The world will not be the same without him. And I, I want his legacy to live on forever. And this is my gift to Peter to share his legacy with those who didn't have the chance to meet him. Peter, what year is it? <laughs> 1960. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs>